Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's August the 1st and it also happens to be a Saturday. So it's the first Saturday in a brand new month, which means it's time for a brand new mission inspiration challenge over on our Facebook group. So this month, the challenge has been set by Linda Simpson and it's all about travel and transport. So let me switch over to my overhead camera and I'll show you what I'm going to create for the month of August. So for the month of August, Linda has come up with this fabulous um, travel and transport theme for us to play with. So your colour skins, I tell you what, let's put this on the screen big. So let's have the big picture. Um, so you've got the colour scheme as being earth brown, sky blue and daffodil yellow. And your words for inspiration for August are flight, tracks, map, destination and world. Okay, so that's quite a lot to go at. So I've gone through my um, junk collection and just pulled out loads and loads of different bits and pieces that I think might be useful or might go for an art journal page based on this theme. Um, Colour wise, I've gone with distress inks this month. So earth brown, I've gone with vintage photo. Um, sky blue, I've gone with tumbled glass because it's kind of a sky bluey light blue. And for the daffodil yellow, I've actually gone for fossilised amber. So those are the three kind of distress inks that I'm going to be playing with um, in my art journal page. Now, I've kind of got an idea of what I want to do, what I want to create for August's art journal page, but I'm not fixed in my mind as to what I want it to look like. I've got an idea, but it's not a finalised image, if you know what I mean. So let's just pop that to one side, move those distressed inks out of the way. Um, in case I need a little bit of darkness thrown in that background, just to make it look a little bit more vintagey, I've also got a stormy sky out, just in case. Okay, so ephemera-wise, um, I've printed off a gazetteer, or sheet from a gazetteer. So this is uh, an index of places in the world beginning with the letters DIS and ending with the word uh, the letters E, not ending, covering places beginning with DIS and ESK. So the last one is Esk South, Tasmanian Principal, or sorry, tr Principal Tributary Lake, Esk South, and Dis, so what have we got? First one, Distrito Federal, Federal Territory, Mexico. <laughs> so there you go. So, piece of a, an old gazette. It's a scan. I do have quite a few of those. Um, and I've also got, um, let's just tip all that out. I've also got um, one of the sheets from my, um, I think it's the Get Lost Digi Download set, which is a set of 8x8 distressed. Um, vintage maps. Now these are vintage maps with overlays. So you can see just running up there they've got letters and you've got um, some splodgy, white splodges and there's some dots just up there. Very very pale but you can see them and again some numbers running down that way and they've also got a grungy um, border. So because I'm working in my 8x8, uh, 8x8, 9x9 art journal these will fit fairly well as the main bits onto the page. And where I want just to do the corners, if there's bits left, because this is square and that's round, and the round is bigger, so there's bound to be a few bits showing through, that's what the gazetteer's for. So I've also got some bits and pieces, some ephemera bits and pieces, um, just from my junk drawer. I've also punched out from um, a die, a thinlet's die, Tim Holtz thinlet's die, crunch, which is the, um, what do they call this one? Is it the globe? Never actually, is that what it says? Globe, yeah. So that's the first one, I think, because they did an elongated version as well. It doesn't fit though, but this one does. Um, and I've also used um, the, what do they call this one? Mixed Media 3, the brick die, which punches through the paper. It doesn't cut out, but it punches through. But what you can do with this is you can cut it, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. Um, to create some nice bits of texture on your page. Um, 
And like I said, there's other bits of ephemera there. I've got some airmail pieces. I've got some postcards with a face on that I've just quickly stapled um, a little photo to. Um, Union flag. Um, we've got little aeroplanes. We've got pointy fingers, first class mails, airmails. Just to add a bit of depth and um, stuff onto the back. So, enough waffling and talking and showing you what I've got. Oh, I've also got a little bit or some postage stamps, which I thought I could just stick in there in the background if I needed a bit more extra texture. Okay, so now that I've waffled for long enough, we need to get started and get this um, cut out and glued down onto um, the page. So, what I'm going to do, he says, just grab his trimmer, put that out of the way. I'm fighting for space today. quickly trim that off. I could just rip it but I don't want to. So just take off the edge. It's an absolute scorching roasting hot day today. Um, 88. <laughs> and it's not scorching um, in comparison to some places in the world at the moment but for the UK 88 is a blooming warm day. Um, so yeah, I've got all the windows open, um, trying to get some airflow into the house. Right, so what page, we're on that page, weren't we? So we need some glue. So if I kind of do this over to one side and then glue that down with some matte medium and then I can fill in these gaps with some bits of gazetteer um, and some colour. So that should theoretically work for me. Mm, he says. Right, let's grab some glue. What do we want? Matte medium. Which means I'm also going to need a brush with some water. Or maybe not some water. I should have got my little mat out, shouldn't I? Oh, I'm not really prepared today. I am prepared, but I'm not prepared, if you know what I mean. I kind of got everything ready that I thought I might need. And then, obviously, I've misjudged and forgot that I'd need the mat and my glues and, and all that kind of gubbins. Right. That's a good word for you. Gubbins. Okay. Matte medium. This isn't a... It's a kind of runny matte medium. Right, let's get some of that on the page. Splodge it down. Get it as far towards the corners as we can. Yeah, well, that was a bit messy. But no page protectors in here today either. So I'm going to have to be really, really careful. Oh, not good. I'm being today what they call cack handed. Too much glue. Right, let's start off. Let's manoeuvre this matte medium to that side because we can use what excess we've got for the top. Right. So lay that about there. Push it down and then go over the top. And then what we've got left over this side, lift it up, lay it down, and go over. It's giving us a bit of a curl, but that's okay, don't mind that. So while that's still a little bit damp and we've got that glue sticking, Let's tear up this gather here and let's start putting some bits in. Like so. And we can 
take it as far down as we want to. Put it at the top. And then we've got a smaller piece which I think I'm going to put over here. Just because I'm going to take it just over the edge of the page because I can go back afterwards and trim it down. So that's four corners, so let's just bring some more out, call a bit more out, a bit thinner maybe, and then add that over here maybe. <laughs> that's quite funny. So just by pure accident, I've got the city or the town of Doncaster just there, which is the next one on from us in the UK, which is a little bit further east from where we are. So let's do another strip. Like so. And maybe just stick that. Actually, let's bring it down there. See how it's all started to dry up a bit now. Okay, so ephemera wise, let's just grab some of those stamps. I'm going to put a little bit more glue just down on my mat and we can start punctuating with some postage stamps. Some of them have got backings on, like airmail backings, well they're actually from envelopes. So I'm going to leave that on because that's kind of nice. And this is a really, really old one because uh, this is pre-decimalization stamp. This says one shilling and sixpence. Um, uh, pre-decimalization um, happened in, I think it was 1973. So it's well old. But I do have quite a few others. So I'm just pulling them out from different places in the world. I've got UK, we've got United States, that one's an India one and this one is another United States one. So we'll put that one up here. I'm always wary when using old postage stamps because you always kind of expect or are frightened of getting a message back from somebody saying, you do realize that that stamp you've stuck down and ruined was a very rare one and worth, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds or dollars or whatever. It's always, always a worry. So we've got Thailand. So let's add one from the Philippines up here. And then what else have we got? Deutschland, the German one. Yes, so I said a nice kind of German one in there. I'm not sure how old that one is, and I think we've got one here. Um, not sure what country that's from. It's got Cyrillic, so obviously it's Eastern Europe, possibly Bulgaria, maybe Russia. Ukraine, you name it, could be anywhere. Well, it couldn't be anywhere. It couldn't be, it couldn't be Britain, but you know what I mean. And then we've got the Netherlands, Holland. No, oh, sorry, no, the Netherlands. It's not the same as Holland. Yeah, let's put it up there towards Iceland. Oh, should we do it up there? Yeah, just like so. So those postage stamps with the Gazetteer and the map create a really nice kind of layered background for the page which I'm liking so let's just get rid of um, no let's not get rid of that just yet because I want to add in the globe there so I'm going to paint the back of the globe with the matte medium just to help it stick. Turn it over and then I'm going to stick it 
down there. Deep in the dough, obviously the, the fact that we've covered over some of the stamps, you've still got the texture showing through, which is cool. So I'll add the medium over the top, hopefully that will stick and stay in place. So we've got a globe within a globe. Okay, and then we'll just add in some of these brick bits. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to snip around the outside of where it's cut. Then you'll see what I mean. Okay, so then you take it out. So let's just snip off that bit there, that bit there, that one there, that one there, that bit, that bit, that bit. We can maybe lose those. Maybe that and that. Those bits. I might leave those. So we've got a kind of brick pattern. So again, let's just go over the top. Creates a nice bit of texture. And we can lay that down like so. But I've got a second piece, because I thought I might want to add a second piece. So this time I'm gonna just quickly just run the scissors around it. Oop. There we go. So just a smaller piece this time. So let's get rid of those and then get rid of that bit. And you can be really selective about the bits that you cut off to get different effects. Different kind of like cluster effects. wanted to just for a little bit of balance you can maybe add another little bit over this side but I don't think I'm going to I'm going to leave that as it is right need to get it all dried off because it's starting to curl and go so we'll give it a quick blast I'll have a tidy up over here and then I'll be back once this is pretty much dry. Okay, so that matte medium has pretty much dried now. So what I want to do is add some color, but I'm not gonna go completely mad with the color. So I'm gonna start off first with that tumbled glass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of the ink to my workspace here. And then I'm going to activate it with some water. 
And then I have a small piece of acetate that I'm going to transfer and pick up, hopefully pick up some of the colour. You see how it's bobbling? And I'm just going to smush it onto the page. So it's going to come out in kind of irregular patterns in the background. I probably actually didn't need to put that onto the craft mat first. I could probably have just done that directly onto the acetate, flip it over and smush. And then you get a really kind of um, irregular pattern building up. Squish and lift. and then dry it off between applications. Okay, so while that was drying, I didn't think that the, um, the tumbled glass was quite dark enough or blue enough. So I've added some of that stormy sky. I knew there was a reason I wanted to get it out. So I'm going to do the same thing again, this time with the fossilized amber. So not put a huge amount of water on it this time and this time just drop it down and then lift it off. And of course with this being more of a yellow colour, more of a honey kind of colour, it will also react with that blue to create some nice greens on there. I think it's more of a concentrated colour in this one, so it's obviously a lot newer ink pad than my tumbled glass was. But it's a nice way of getting some unusual texture into the background of your project. And it's a, a resource, water-based ink, that you've probably already got without having to go searching for something new. Okay, so pretty much that fossilized amber is dry now, but like I said, you can still see some of the blue there, but there's not a huge amount of that blue showing through, just there, you get some nice blue. Um, so I want to add some more, so I'm going to carry on um, just building up the layers. This time I'm just lightly going to activate the ink and then I'm going to just smush it down with my fingers. And just keep on adding those layers until I'm happy with the, the colour depth, if you like. Grab some more of that stormy sky. See, we're getting some nice kind of smushed effects. So just keep on adding, drying, adding and drying. And when I'm happy, I'll be right back. Okay, so that's pretty much dry. So I've got some nice kind of subtle paint effects in there. Some nice kind of like water 
colorery effects in there. There are about a thousand and other ways, a thousand and one other ways you can get the same effects by using pigment powders, by spritz, by sprays. But you know, you can't use every technique on every page. So you've got to pick and choose which one you want to use on which one you feel in the mood to use. So that's pretty much dry, but it did take quite a while to get dry. And I think it's because the water was sitting on top of the matte medium um, and wasn't actually soaking through. It kind of sealed the page. So it did take a little bit of extra time to dry. So what I want to do now is just to trim off with a pair of scissors or a craft knife this excess, just round off the page a little bit now. And also have a mouthful of coffee. So I'm going to just trim those pages back and then I will join with you again once that's done because you don't really want to see me cutting bits of papers off the page because it's boring. Okay, so all trimmed, that looks a bit neater and tidy. Now you can still see those shiny bits where it's still a little bit damp, but hey ho. Right, so next step for me then is to start gluing down um, some of my ephemera pieces. So I've got the cart postal, the postcard with that little um, photograph on there. So I'm going to bring in that vintage photo now. Just load up my foam. So this is where we start bringing in some of that brown colour. And then we can start adding on. Now then, is that clogged up? Probably. There we go. Doesn't take much. So get some of that glue there we are, on there. And then let's stick that jaunty angle. Let's go that way, I think. Just at a slight angle. You can get away with angles with your ephemera rather than keeping everything into straight lines. And then let's use one of these airmail stickers because this is all about travel. So let's put that up there. Now, no real rule about where to place your ephemera, it's just what looks good on the page. So you can just place things down, um, audition them, as we like to say. And then, if you like the look of something, use it. If you don't, don't. Um, what else did we have? Now then, somewhere I had a ticket, here we go, like a ticket shape. So I think on this one, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a cluster on cluster. So we're going to first class mail there. Oh, excuse me a moment, I should have turned that off. Okay, my apologies about that. So, what was I doing? I was sticking down and just making up that cluster of the ticket with the pointy finger and the first class mail. Um, while I was just on the phone, I just quickly went round the Union flag. Not the Union Jack, it's the Union flag because it's only the Union Jack when it's at sea. Common, common mistake, but never mind. Right, so... Let's stick that up here, over there, and then I've got this fabulous robin, which I love. Now, the die cutting on it was absolutely appalling. Obviously, Advantus, no quality control at all. This is from um, one of the ephemera packs from Tim Holtz. Um, 
think it was the botanical one, I'm not really sure. But anyway, I'm going to stand that so it's actually on the globe with that union behind it because flight, which is, so we've got flight, map and world and we've incorporated some of the colours so we'll get in there, we'll get in there. Just want to add a few other little bits in. I love this photo of um, the little family. Now there's a ferris wheel in there and there's the tower. So even though this I think is from one of the Tim Holtz ephemera packs it's actually a photograph of somebody on holiday here in the UK at a place called Blackpool. Um, at first glance I thought it was the Eiffel Tower but it's not. <laughs> They're actually stood on the beach at Blackpool. So there's a what we call a big wheel. So just ink that up. But what I also want to do, just use one of my little tabbed um, tabs, if you like, just to add a little glue to the back of that, and just there, and then I'm going to stick that just coming out the side. just to create like a little file document. Just glue it all together front and back and then we just add a little bit of extra vintage. And then let's whack some more glue on the back. Love these old photos. And I want to stick that down there. Like that. And then we have a little aeroplane. So I'll put some glue on there. And we'll have that flying up there. So again, that gives you the flight, but also we've got another aeroplane going in this direction. They're saying air mail tomorrow's mail today. So let's just add that into the mix as well for no other reason than we can. So just add a bit of distress to the edge, a little bit of glue, and then I think what we'll do, yeah, I think we'll add that just about there. I don't think I want to add anything else for the time being. I'm going to let that sit for a minute and just dry and then I'll be back once I've had a think, a thunk, about whether or not to include a quote or a phrase on there. I'm not sure yet, but I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so all that ephemera is pretty much dry now. I just wanted to add a few other little bits and pieces to it. I've got this French script stamp, which is just a little um, illegible script stamp. And I'm just going to ink it up with some of that vintage photo. And I'm just going to add just a little bit. Just here and there, just to kind of tie things together. I think that'll do. Just adds a little bit more. 
and of course I did use the vintage photo so I'm still sticking with my three colours from the colour scheme. Right, so just to finish off then, so I want to add a little bit of a quote on there. So I've gone through, I've pulled out um, one of the, I don't know whether this is small talk or chit chat, because it's not with the cover. Um, and I found this quote um, from the Tim Holtz sheets, which says, travel the world, travel the world over to find the beautiful. So I think what we'll do is we'll just add a teeny tiny, Bit of vintage photo on there just around the edges and then we can stick that just across that section there Just like that. And I think I'm going to call this page done. So like I've done with previous months, I found a place to put these. Fold that over just, and then I can stick some glue on the back. And there you have it. So I think, I know there's a little bit of shine um, on there. I probably will go over it with a little bit of um, clear gesso just to dull it down a little bit later. But for the now, I think that's going to be enough. Happy with that. And I hope you've enjoyed watching me put that together kind of on the hoof. So if you have enjoyed watching that, please remember to give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. Um, YouTube does then recommend my video to other people who may not have seen any of my videos before. So give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking that button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. Don't forget, if you want to join in with the monthly challenge over on our Facebook group, then all you have to do is to click that link that's in the description area below um, or just jot it down because it's on the screen right now and then visit later. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.